Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. I'm here for the first of several videos I'm going to be making on this truly special synthesizer, the ARP Quadra. Over the past few years, I've acquired a few broken ARP Quadras, ranging in condition from good to really freaking awesome like this one. Now I've lined up a really good home for this one, but before I can commit to delivering it and start the restoration, I need to know if the membrane panel on it is good. If you're buying an ARP Quadra, particularly a broken one that you can't just turn on and test, this video may save you from buying a very expensive doorstop. Or if you have a Quadra with a, some problematic membrane switches, this will help you figure out if the membrane panel is bad or if there's a problem with the electronics. So the ARP Quadra used this membrane switch panel instead of push button switches like you see on the Oberheims or the Profits but they turned out to have a really high failure rate and pretty much sealed the deal for the failure of ARP as a company. So without removing anything from the synthesizer, in this video we're going to test out the membrane panel and see if it's working. I'm going to be using a multimeter set to resistance and uh, while it's not strictly required, a multimeter that can make a continuity check tone like this is really really helpful. The switches in the membrane panel are arranged into a matrix made out of columns and rows, which the service manual calls banks and returns. So I explained switch matrices in a recent video I made where I made a repair to the switch matrix inside the key bed of an Oberheim OBXA. On the uh, ARP Quadra, there's also two standalone switches here and here on the schematic for interval write, and those are not part of the switch matrix. So we're going to check this membrane panel switch matrix for a number of modes of failure. We can quickly check to see if any switch columns are shorted to each other, any switch rows are shorted to each other, and if there's any switches that are stuck closed. And if all three of those check out okay, we're going to go through each switch individually and make sure that the switch isn't stuck open, so the switch just is broken and won't work. So let's get started. Uh, we open up the Quadra by removing four screws, which I've already taken out two here to the left of the keyboard and two here to the right of the keyboard and then we fold the top open and behold the mass of electronics inside the ARP Quadra uh, and we're going to get to all all of this stuff in future videos but for today we're going to be focusing on the membrane panels and testing them the membrane panel has these fragile plastic ribbon connectors that poke through little slats in the uh, panel and plug into connectors on the other side of this circuit board. This is the microcomputer circuit board. And we're going to be probing these uh, solder joints here on the bottom of the board where, uh, for the connector that these ribbon cables plug into. And that way we can test this without actually disconnecting the membrane panel or even removing any circuit boards from the keyboard. So the first thing you may notice if you compare it to the service manual is, oh no, these connections have uh, 15 pins, but the service manual only shows 10 pins. We're so screwed. But uh, don't worry, your pal Synth Chaser has you covered. I spent a bunch of time with my multimeter probing around and I made an updated uh, uh, connection diagram uh, that shows the interface of this connector. So here's the updated interface that I figured out for the 15 pin connectors that's not in any service manual or on schematics that you can find online. And from what I can tell, this change was made to create a level of redundancy. So when one of the ribbon connectors broke, you could still at least partially use the synthesizer. In the original design, all the switch matrix rows were on one connector, and all the columns were on a separate connector. So if one cable broke, you were completely hosed. This updated version has all the rows on both connectors, and half of the columns on each connector. So if one connector breaks, you could still use half the synthesizer, in theory. But personally, you know, if I had to change the design because stuff was breaking, I'd have just changed it to something that wasn't going to break in the first place. In any case, I'm going to put these, uh, um, the, this interface on my website, so hopefully it'll save someone some time and confusion later on down the line. But let's get started. So the first few tests we're going to do are really quick and easy. So first we're going to test to see if there's any switch matrix rows that are shorted to each other. By that I mean something like row 2 is shorted to row 4. And fortunately, all these rows are arranged sequentially on the connector. So we can start with one lead here on pin 7, which is row 0. And we can take our other lead, and we're in the continuity test mode. 
and we can rake down the other pins, starting with the next pin, which is row one. And we shouldn't hear any beeping. If we hear any beeping, then there's continuity between rows. So now I move to row one and rake down the remaining ones, and I'll continue down the line. And then I'll have tested all combinations of rows. And uh, this last pin has no connection. So uh, we're good on, on that. So the next thing I'm going to check is if there's any columns that are shorted to each other. And the columns are split across two connectors. So we have uh, four pins for columns on the left here, four pins of columns on the right. And they decided to make uh, one of them redundant across the two connectors. So it's not quite as simple as the last test, but it's still pretty darn simple. So I'm going to uh, put my, my test lead on the first column I want to test, which is uh, column A, which is uh, pin 4 here on the right connector. And uh, then I'm going to rake the other lead over the other column pins, which are the leftmost four pins on each connector. And I shouldn't hear any beeps. And uh, I don't. So next I'll move to B, which is pin 3 of the rightmost connector. And I'll rake over the other columns. And that's, that's good. So C is uh, redundant. So here I'm going to be on column C on the rightmost connector. And check continuity between the remaining pin over here. But when I come over to the left side, I'm going to hear a beep here on pin 4 because that, that column C is redundant to both connectors. But uh, I'm not shorted to column D, column E, or column G. So I'm good there. So now I'm moving over here. We have uh, column D, which is uh, pin 3 on this connector. And I'm not shorted to any other connectors. E, which is pin 2. And that's good. F is pin 1 on the rightmost connector. And that's good. And G is pin 1 on the leftmost connector. So we're good. We don't have any columns shorted together. So the next test is to see if any switches are stuck closed. So that means a switch that's permanently switched on. So to test this we're going to put one lead on the pin for a column, say right here for column A, and we're going to take our other lead and we're going to rake the pins for the rows. So I just raked across A0 to A7 and uh, I didn't get any beeping so we have no stuck switches in that column. So now we're going to move over to the next column B and we're going to again rake over the rows, and we're good, and we'll repeat this for all the rows, all the columns, I mean. And we're good. And we're going to test the interval right switch a little later, because that's not part of the switch matrix. So since we've cleared the first three tests, now it's time to test each individual switch. And because I only have two hands, I've enlisted the help of my lovely assistant to push the buttons. So we're going to go down the panel, and for each button, I'm going to look on my cheat sheet uh, for the row and column of that switch, and we're going to listen for the tone on my multimeter as she presses it a few times. So let's first get interval right out of the way. So interval right isn't part of the switch matrix. It has its own switch which connects the interval right line to ground. So I'm going to put my multimeter on those two leads. So ground and interval right, which are next to each other. And uh, we're going to press that button a few times. Looks good. So uh, now we'll move on down the line. What's the next button after interval right? Number one. Okay. So I'm going to look on the schematic, and uh, program one is column G row zero. So I'm going to put my leads here uh, on column G, which is pin 1 of this leftmost connector, and row 0, which is pin 7. And she presses the button a few times, and it's good. So I'm going to move to the next one, program 2, and program 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight. Pressing it. It's not working. Hmm. This is bad news. Let's take a closer look at this, though. All right, this is what I was noticing. We weren't getting a beeping tone, but I did catch something out of the corner of my eye. So we can't rely totally on the beeping because I'm going to go back to uh, that button. Number and, eight. Yeah, and hold it down. Pressing and holding. Yeah, see, so it's measuring 53 ohms, which I guess isn't enough to make the continuity tester beep, but it's more than adequate for the switch to be working. Let's go back to uh, the previous one. Hold that down. You can see the contact resistance is just barely a little lower, so that's 50.6 ohms. So uh, it freaked me out that it didn't beep, but it uh, turned out to be nothing. So we're going to go down the rest of the switches now and test to see if there's any bad ones. So despite the uh, scare that was caused by uh, the contact resistance being a little high on some of the switches and not triggering the continuity tester, uh, we did go down all the switches of the membrane panel and they all check out. So now I feel comfortable that the membrane panel on this Quadra is good and will work and that I can get underway restoring it for my customer. And that's going to be the subject of some future videos. But for now, we just had a peek at the weakest link inside these synthesizers, which is the membrane panel. And hopefully someone out there uses this information to avoid buying a lemon Quadra or from giving away a Quadra thinking that they have a lemon. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on more Quadra videos. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.